Hey there, welcome back to another video. This time around, it is my review of the 1994 cult classic comedy, Clerks. Now, before I go any further with this review of this uh, comedy, I just want to point out my initial brief connection with this film. Because it's a very loose connection, actually. Unlike a lot of other people who grew up in the 90s, I didn't really have a lot of um, fond memories of this movie because it's one of those films that I actually didn't watch until recently. Uh, it's a movie that I was aware of. I remember seeing a few clips on television uh, when I was a teenager. I actually remember watching a couple episodes of the cartoon series, uh, but it's not a film that I really watched or really had much of a desire to watch because I guess when I was a teenager and I, and younger, I was just more into other genres. I wasn't really into comedies. I was more of a sci-fi or action guy. I mean, you know, mixed with a little bit of horror in terms of whatever horror I could get away with watching. So comedies weren't really what I would seek out. So this never really was on my radar. But after watching the movie, I get it. I understand wholeheartedly why this became an instant cult classic and why it got so many good reviews and why it still gets a lot of critical acclaim. Because this film is excellent. This is a great movie. And it's also... A film to me that I that I personally believe will be timeless, even though it does have some dated references or some moments of comedy that, according to today's sensibilities, might be considered a little too offensive. Despite all of that, at its core, it's about these guys who work in a convenience store and work in a retail environment, and it deals with the reality of the retail environment and how much it sucks. And I feel that <clears throat> that is something that it, that will live on as long as the retail environment exists and people still work in retail. This is something that's going to be relatable and funny and cathartic for many years to come. Now clerks is uh, written and directed by Kevin Smith and for a first time director, the results are pretty good. I think he definitely uh, became a better director uh, as he continued to work on films, as he got more experience behind the camera, because a lot of the shots in this are not anything really that ambitious or that interesting. A lot of the direction in this is very safe. And, and pretty stock in terms of the selection of shots and the movement of the camera and a lot of other different things. But I think it's something that was done on purpose, not only to just hide Kevin Smith's limitations at the time as a filmmaker, but also to provide a certain amount of uh, realness uh, and, and, and uh, reality to, to the way the film is shot. And the fact that it was uh, black and white also helped uh, cover a lot of the uh, issues that Kevin Smith uh, probably had at the time doing his first movie. Because it being black and white doesn't have to worry about the right lighting or making sure the setting is something that you can shoot in and it's not that difficult to... Uh, film and a lot of that other stuff so making him black and white was a very inspired choice by kevin smith and i think that's also something that a lot of first-time filmmakers probably wouldn't always do because they would think oh well that's too weird that's too strange to shoot my film in black and white who does black and white movies anymore and i think it was a good choice it helped the film stand out visually as well as made it so a lot of the limitations that Smith had at the time were not going to be so prevalent. 
all of this being said, I don't think the direction is bad by any means. I think he did a good job, especially for a first time filmmaker. But there are some moments where it does look a little rough. And a lot of that is just due to the fact that, hey, this is Kevin's first film. And that rawness at times is kind of a, a reason for this film's success as well, because it just makes it feel more authentic. It makes it have this look and feel like it is a bunch of security camera footage that's just spliced together in, into a narrative. Now, speaking of the narrative, uh, Kevin Smith, uh, he wrote the film. And the reason why this film got distribution in the first place is mainly off of the back of this screenplay. And I can see why. This script is very fun very creative very clever it's ballsy it's irreverent it taps into a uh, counterculture uh and just really gets it kevin smith got what a lot of adolescents and a lot of people were going through uh at this time in the 90s and it just felt like a good snapshot of 90s counterculture. And there were a lot of fun little references to pop culture that wasn't done in a mocking way. It wasn't one of those things where like, oh, we're, we're just making fun of these people because they're nerds. Oh, they like Star Wars. Oh, what a bunch of nerds. Like, it didn't do that. And that was refreshing. As well as just the the sheer amount of profanity and and uh, just craziness in this script. This is the kind of stuff that nowadays you probably wouldn't necessarily get away with. And it wouldn't be considered to be something that's visionary. Because a lot of people would just think it's too crass or, or, or too offensive. They'd be like that one guy who's like, uh, you know, I don't know if there's anything you could do because I'm offended. You've really offended me. And this film was like a middle finger to that. It's like, fuck you if you're offended. Take a joke. Um, and it portrayed a lot of the reality of working in a retail store. And as somebody that has that experience now, this is even more hilarious because it's so real like the stuff where the customer doesn't see the sign and forgets how to read and then gets on you for getting for making the sign wrong when really it's right there in big colors and right in front of them and it says this is this price and or this is where this is and people are just oblivious or people that just ask the stupid questions and there is a certain catharsis to that to see these characters of randall and dante and to see some of them call these customers out and have the guts to you know spit water on them or call them names or do all this stuff that you couldn't get away with because you'd be fired. So there, there's just a certain catharsis there as, as a retail worker when you watch this movie. Where you're like, damn, I, I wish I could do that. I mean, I wish I could be like Randall and be like, you're not shopping here anymore. You're banned. <laughs> like, but, but you can't, you can't, do, you can't do that. You don't have that power most of the time. And... With this film, it, it becomes kind of a power fantasy for retail workers where you're just like, yeah, you know, I wish I was in that position. And in, in this in, in in this capacity, it's like you can be in that in, in, in uh, that position finally. And you can be the one that calls the shots and you can be the one to kick somebody out of your store. And. I even like the way that it handles relationships. There's a certain reality to that too, that it's not all sunshine and rainbows and there's a lot of rough patches and bumps in the road. And 
there's just a lot of things about this script that really do click. And what's funny is it's not really the the characters, you know, Dante and Randall or Jay and Sal and Bob or Veronica or any of these other characters like uh, Caitlin that got the attention of these executives at, at Merrimax. It was the, the, the scene where Dante, after hearing that Veronica has sucked 36 dicks, 37 including his own, he's going up to help some guy at the counter and he's just exasperated. He's just like, my girlfriend has sucked 37 dicks! And then the the, the customer's like, in a row? <laughs> and apparently the the exact the executives were laughing so hard at that scene in the script that they were like we're we're gonna we want this movie and i thought that was just perfect because that is one of the funniest scenes in the entire movie and it's great that these stuffy studio heads they got it and they thought it was as funny as as the audience ultimately uh, did and yeah there's just a lot of just irreverent crazy moments in this script that i just love like just the conversations between dante and randall at the quick stop uh about various different topics the moment when they're in the car and they're driving to the funeral home and randall tells dante about his cousin and how he died trying to suck his own dick uh the stuff with jay and silent bob the uh various different customers that come in and do weird inane things like the guy with the eggs or the milk maid or a lot of this these other moments uh the the guy who asks dante to use the restroom so he could jerk off and then he dies and then that leads to this just insane twist at the end involving caitlin and how she thinks that dante was surprising her in a dark bathroom because the lights are off with sex but it's actually the dead guy and she fucked a corpse which is just absolutely nuts and just pure insanity and with the wrong kind of script with the wrong tone it could come across as the opposite of funny but it's hilarious because it's just how outlandish it is but despite the outlandishness of this script and a lot of these other, you know, funny but crass lines of dialogue, like there are some monologues here that are really poignant and quite brilliant in terms of the way that they're set up. And the one that really stands out to me is when Dante he's finally had had enough of his life and in his situation and he's he's tired of it all and he's just gotten to the point where he's so beaten down that he's just bitching for bitching's sake you know he's not actually complaining about his place in life with the perspective of why he's there and what he has done personally to, to put himself in this situation. And even prior to the this this moment between Dante and Randall, you have like the salsa shark uh, scene where Randall tells Dante to, to, you know, shit or get off the pot. And that leads to this just brilliant uh, monologue by Randall where Dante, he, he, he's... He's reached his breaking point and he's like, you know what the real tragedy is about all of this is? I'm not even supposed to be here today. And then Randall is just, he's fed up. He's fed up with Dante not getting it. It's like, oh, fuck you. Fuck you, pal. Jesus. There you go again trying to pass the buck. I'm the source of all your misery. Who closed the store to play hockey? Who closed the store to go to the wake? 
Who tried to win back his ex-girlfriend without even discussing how he felt with his present one? You want to blame somebody? Blame yourself. I'm not even supposed to be here today. You sound like an asshole. Jesus, nobody twisted your arm to be here today. You're of your own violation. You like to think the weight of the world rests on your shoulders. Like this place would fall apart if Dante wasn't here. Jesus, you overcompensate for having what's basically a monkey's job. You push fucking buttons. Anybody can walk, waltz in here and do our jobs. You, you're so obsessed with making it seem so much more epic, so much more important than it really is. Christ, you work at a convenience store, Dante. And badly, I might add. I work at a shitty video store, badly as well. You know, that guy, Jay's got it right, man. He has no delusions about what he does. Us, we like to make ourselves seem much more important than the people that come here to buy a paper or, God forbid, cigarettes. We look down on them if we're, as if we're so advanced. Well, if we're so fucking advanced, what are we doing working here? So, yeah, just a lot of great moments for these young actors to just latch on to and, and just create some genuine movie magic. So for the most part, yeah, I think the script is excellent. I think it's easily the most consistent thing about this movie uh, in terms of the humor, in terms of the tone, in terms of just how unpredictable it is, at least when it comes to like the first time you, you watch this movie. And of course, the characters. This is a good example of a film where you don't have necessarily a ton of character depth or a ton of backstory for these characters but it's still really effective because there's a lot of moments for these characters to shine in terms of showcasing their personalities it focuses less on their character development and more on their character and their personality and i think that was really a good choice for this screenplay for the story I know the original ending is different. I know the original ending for Clerks was more depressing and Dante gets shot and dies. I'm glad they didn't go that route because that would have been a complete and total tonal shift and it really would not have clicked or worked with the rest of the movie. The film wouldn't be as beloved if that happened. In fact, it would have gotten a lot of criticism and a lot of the people who liked everything up until that point would say something along the lines of oh clerks was awesome until the stupid ending where dante gets shot at the end and that definitely would sour them on the movie so it was a good choice to not end it that way and yeah uh i guess if i had to pick anything about this script that i felt wasn't really as good as everything else it's a whole bit with the cigarette guy, the guy who's coming in saying don't smoke cigarettes and tries to start a riot, and he, you find out that he's a, a Chulis gum spokesperson who's just trying to get people to chew gum. Uh, like it wasn't executed poorly, it just wasn't as funny as any of the other sequences or any of the other moments in the film, uh, and it just... It, I, I think it personally could have been cut out and I don't feel that it would have hurt the film in any capacity. It would have just made it even more consistently irreverent and, and funny. But that's just a, that's just a little, little tiny nitpick, to be honest. Now, the film also features, in my opinion, some really genuinely good performances as well from a lot of newcomers. In the industry, a lot of people hadn't really done a lot of acting until Clerks. You know, I've got Brian O'Halloran and Jeff Anderson. I know that uh, Kevin Smith initially wanted to play Randall, but he decided to not do that because he couldn't necessarily remember his lines or memorize enough of his lines. So we went with Jeff Anderson. And I think that was the right call. Uh, I don't think Clerks would be nearly as fun or nearly as memorable or as enjoyable as it is without Jeff Anderson as Randall uh, or Brian O'Halloran as Dante. I think the two of them were just great. They had a good chemistry. Um, 
you bought the antagonistic nature between the two when they were upset at one another and it felt real and genuine but you also bought the the friendship that the two shared and i also like marilyn gigolati as veronica uh, i like the fact that you have a character in a film like this that's female and is like the girlfriend of one of the the lead characters and she's a bit of a ball buster she she's not afraid to stand her ground she stands up for what she believes in and she's at times maybe a bit rough maybe a bit sharp but she's got a heart of gold and that definitely does show here and you just buy that she genuinely does care about Dante. And that would, that's what makes the whole situation in the film when she ultimately breaks up with him so tragic. Because, yeah, like Silent Bob said in his one line of dialogue, like, you got a woman who will make you lasagna and bring it to work. Like, what is wrong with you? And he just doesn't realize how good he had it. And he just gets back together with this old you know high school sweetheart and Caitlin and and you have the whole situation that happens with that and the dead guy and it's just it's just a clusterfuck and Lisa Spoonhauer does a good job playing Caitlin as well a very typical kind of Jersey girl um, but that's definitely what they were trying to go for and it worked I mean this is a film that takes place in New Jersey so it, it was definitely something that that uh, clicked. Uh, Jason Mewes is a ball of high energy in this as Jay and pretty much steals every scene that he's in. Uh, hilarious. Um, you could definitely see why Kevin Smith thought that Jason Mewes was someone with a lot of potential. Uh, Kevin Smith, you know, it's good to sound with Bob. Definitely channeling his inner Charlie Chaplin. Uh, but it works. And uh, you also have Scott Mosier, who is a longtime friend of Kevin Smith's, who was also a producer on this. He plays a bunch of different people. Plays William Black, the angry hockey playing customer, the angry mourner. Uh, and you just have a lot of people who are like friends and colleagues of Kevin's that that had little uh, cameos and, and, and short roles in the movie. And the film also has a cinematographer, you know, David Klein, but uh, there's really not much to say about the cinematography because it's shot in black and white. So there's not, it's not like there's a lot of color and a lot of like particular lighting and whatever, or anything really that ambitious in terms of cinematography, but it looks fine uh, for what the, what the film is. Uh, the editing by Scott Mosher and Kevin Smith, I thought was excellent. Because there's a lot of moments where there's just a lot of stuff that's going on. There's some, there's a lot of quick cuts and cutaway gags, and everything just has this right flow and and feel to it from the editing uh, standpoint. It doesn't feel too egregious or too uh, off or or wonky. Everything just connects together really well, and. It's only like 92 minutes, so it goes by at a really fast pace. It has a great pace to it. And yeah, overall, I got to be honest, like this is one of my favorite comedies of the 90s now because I, I really, really enjoyed this. I thought it was hilarious. I liked a lot of the characters. I liked a lot of the crazy scenarios that they were in. And I, I could relate to a lot of it since I've w been working in retail for so long and uh, had some good authentic performances by a lot of the actors and the cast. And it really did feel like something fresh and different at the time. And still now feels like something fresh and different if you watch it, especially compared to a lot of things that you see nowadays. This isn't pc this isn't sanitized this is raw this is rough this is real and there's a certain factor to that that i feel is just admirable and genuinely entertaining to watch because of the fact that it's a film that's not afraid to show things as they really are as well as have a little fun and be a little 
over the top with things. It's not it's not so realistic to the point where it's a slog to sit through or it feels like it's trying to preach uh some kind of lesson or or uh life ideal or or shove some sort of message down your throat. It's not doing that, but it is realistic enough in a way where it seems like these are real people getting involved in real but genuinely uh, uh, crazy and unlikely scenarios at this convenience store. But uh, yeah, that's my thoughts on Clerks. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you later. See ya. Ooh, Navy SEALs!